of selectmen meeting for June 22nd, 2021. We have three members of the board as town manager, town clerk. Um, that's a quorum, so we're all good. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Patty, were we expecting Mark today? No. Okay. <laughs> So first thing is we have the approval of our meeting minutes from June 15th. I will entertain a moment motion to approve the minutes. I second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? All right. Uh, first, public comment. Is anybody here for public comment? Terrific. We have no reports. We have no reports from departments or committees. And we have, we have uh, the uh, appointment for the sewer district. We have two slots open, two people, and they're both applying to continue on the board. They both submitted a letter to continue and neither are here, but nobody else is interested. So any, Questions? Any issues? Do we need to nominate them one at a time or both at the same time? I think we do both at the same time or one at a time. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I make a motion that we approve uh, Kenneth Hall and Ben Niles as reappointments to the Berwick Sewer District trustees. Yep. For a term of three years each. Um, any further discussion? Uh, all those in favor? And both Kenneth and Ben are back on the board. So now we have the open spot on the school board. It's a one-year position because they're just filling your term, right? Correct. Um, and we have three applicants. So we're just going to go right in order, in the order they're on my list. Uh, Vanessa uh, Daly, please come right on up and uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, why you want to be on the board, what experience you might have. Um, so thank you for your time. Again, I'm Vanessa Daly. I've been in Berwick for 10 years now, mother of four. So I have some kids going through the school district. My son is entering middle school this upcoming fall. I have a daughter starting kindergarten. Um, she'll actually be joining the Jumpstart sure. program in uh, just a couple of weeks. Could you uh, move the microphone oh. a little bit closer to yourself there? <laughs> is that better? Yeah. Uh, and then I have two younger children who are four and going on two in September. Mm -hmm. um, I've always been pretty active in their education, volunteering at the schools, taking part in the sports programs that they participate in throughout the town, soccer and baseball um, most recently. And learning about this opportunity, I've been listening in the past year through the pandemic of the school board meetings. And it's been very apparent to me that community voice is really important. Um, lack of participation that I've seen is, I think, just astonishing. And so when I saw this opportunity, I felt like my experience, kids going through the program and the district would be a great opportunity to bring my skills um, and background to help out the, the school board and those that are still, still there. So my background professionally, I'm an HR manager, um, conflict resolution, you know, bringing new ideas to the table, bringing forth new ideas and just kind of pushing forward, I think is where our community needs to go. That's all I can. Any questions? Um, there was another position open in Berwick this past spring for the school board. Okay. Um, did you apply to run for that? I, not, I, was not, I didn't see that one. Okay. All right. Okay, terrific. Thank you very much. The next on my list is Jeremy Caston. Got in right on the wire. Can I speak out of turn? I don't think there was another. Didn't Travis Storman was? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. You're right. I'm so sorry. I wasn't thinking. I thought you meant it was open. 
No. Yeah, there was there was a there was a spot. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> Jeremy, <laughs> please tell us about yourself and what, why you want to be on the school board and what experience you might have that might help. For sure, I made some notes. So, forgive me if I look down more than I look up. I am Jeremy Caston. I've been in Berwick five years. Can you hear me? Yeah. Do I need to get closer to the mic? Okay. Yeah. Um, I, uh, I have a homestead here. We raise turkeys and peacocks, mm -hmm. chickens, and sometimes pigs, dairy goats, and children. And two of my, uh, two of my three kids are at the Huzzy School, so they're starting off with ah. the MSAD 60 uh, 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 path and it's been a great experience so far and uh since they've uh, i think three years ago started i've had a chance to volunteer at the winter carnival we brought our goats our, our baby goats to come visit the first grade class and do a little minor education in, in uh in goat care and mostly petting and um we uh also uh started to apply for a grant through the school to set up a fruit orchard at Huzzy School in the old soccer field, which is um, goodness mm -hmm. traffic. Yeah, I guess so. Mm -hmm. uh, which is uh, uh, in process. The uh, pandemic slowed that down, but I think is a great opportunity to bring some more uh, recognition of our agricultural roots within the grounds of, of Huzzy School. So. Um, if you don't know, I strongly believe in public service. Uh, I've been the chair of Envision Berwick uh, since January, I believe I was sworn in. And I since I, uh, I, I started chairing Envision, I've been able to accomplish several uh, fun things, which uh, include this sort of positive daily social media uh, output and, and keeping spirits light and, uh, and promoting local businesses. Uh, we have a mailer that I hope all of you got that uh, is seasonal, including a calendar that kind of is the connective tissue, we hope, between our town's various departments and supports local business again and people enjoying our town and, and supporting that town. Um, we also obviously have not been organizing, organizing as many events as we would in a non-pandemic time, but we just did the Hackett Backpack last uh, Saturday, clearing the, uh, the area by the brook in front of the firehouse. And we have Open Farm Day coming up on July 25th, which I hope some of you will consider attending, if I can get in a little plug for that, uh, which I think is going to be a great way to um, bring people closer again to those agricultural roots of Berwick and also draw the town together. So um, the point of all that is that that Envision's goal and mission is to uh, implement our, our, our comp plan, is to look carefully both at the comp, comprehensive plan and at the surveys and, and say, what can we do to support this, to move these ideals and, and, and notions forward? And um, I really enjoy that quite a bit. And I think it's um, been successful. And I feel proud of what we've done so far especially given the pandemic. In some ways, the Zoom meetings make things easier, but as you know, it also makes, makes it harder to get people here. So um, I think that some of that mission of taking the comp plan and carefully looking at it and implementing it is, is tied to what the, the school board does. And, and I think that that's where um, my skill set would be uh, an advantage would be, you know, a boon to, to the community and to the school system. I, as a, a, a member of the community and, and um, somebody who stands here in front of you as, as a possible uh, person to, to fill the vacated seat, uh, I believe strongly in public education. I think an equitable and, and um, and excellent education is within reach and has to be within reach for all of our citizens, for all of our, our children, students. And um, I definitely believe in the importance of a balanced budget within that school system. I think that um, 
consistently, our schools have done an incredible job with, you know, what is a finite resource and serving this community. And I want to continue down that path and, and help to foster that. And truly, I believe my skills are in connecting people, finding common ground, and figuring out how people can come together. And Envision Berwick is a great example in so much as we know that everybody who's there wants to make the town better. And so when you start from that common place, even when there may not be every single thing you agree on, it, it draws people together to find that common place to begin with. Um, so in closing, <laughs> the fact that there are three of us here today to fill the seat potentially says more than anything I could say. And it gives me hope and it makes me proud of, of our town and of the school district. And I think, you know, whatever decision you make, that it's a good decision because we're lucky to be in this position. Mm -hmm. and, and that is the future of Berwick. And that's what I'm most excited about. Thank you very much for your time. Questions? I was just gonna ask the same question. I wasn't aware. And frankly, um, it wasn't, be, yeah. <laughs> Don't worry, we're not gonna lower. It's, it's a <laughs> fair question and um, it was not on my radar then and it has since become on my radar. And that's, okay. and it probably is because, you know, um, getting started with Envision Berwick, I, it took me a while to feel like I was up to speed and um, what I perceived to be the initial mission of just starting to draw the siloed uh, departments together, I was pretty myopically focused on that for, for, for a good okay. stretch. I just thought it'd be fair. I asked. Yeah, no, of course. <laughs> Absolutely. If you didn't ask, I was going to ask. <laughs> I, I too was going to go that way. Yeah. Um, Jeremy, my one question is, I mean, you're so intertwined with everything in Envision right now. How are you going to balance what you're already trying to drive and the time that's committed to, to the school board as well? Well, so that's a, <clears throat> that's a really good question. Um, and the answer is, I think that in life, if you um, want to achieve a lot, you just keep going. You know, there's, there's the, the phrase, if you want to get something done, give it to a busy man. I think that, that it is true that you can, look, everybody has a, a, a point at which they max out. But my, you know, I have a two, a seven and an eight-year-old. My two-year-old starts kindergarten, well, nursery school this year at uh, Joy of Learning. So that buys me quite a bit of time that I didn't have. And up to this point, I was managing, you know, freelance work, running a homestead and farm, restoring a house, the list goes on. <laughs> Not maybe doing the best job in any of them, but doing a serviceable job. So I think um, I definitely put my civic responsibilities high on the list, maybe to the chagrin of my eight-year-old daughter whose bedroom still isn't painted, but, um, <laughs> It's important to me, is the answer. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm good. Okay. That line about, you know, give it to a busy man hurt me, though. <laughs> I, I'm so busy that if you give me one more thing, I'll probably break down and cry. <laughs> All right. Our last candidate is Elva Lovejoy. Is that how you pronounce that? Yes. Okay. Terrific. Yes. Not many traps in that, but I yeah. just my bad ask. So my name is Alva Lovejoy. Um, just a bit about myself. I don't have anything written down. I didn't know if this was going to be more of an interview type thing or whatever, but I can tell you about myself. I'm pretty much a lifelong member of SAD 60. Uh, I grew up in the district in Lebanon. Um, I've taught in Lebanon for, I've taught in North Berwick for over 30 years. Um, backing up a little bit, when, uh, when I'm married and we decided to have children, we wanted to raise our kids in this district because I knew it was a good district. <laughs> so I raised my children in this district. Um, I was a teacher, like I said, in, in North Grove for over 30 years. Uh, and then for the last um, seven years of my career in SAD 60, I was an administrator. I was assistant principal and then uh, principal of Knowlton School. I was assistant at Hussey School and principal in Alton School. So I guess you just say I've always had a vested interest in the district. I, I believe in the district. Um, I know that we do good things, and I just want to keep that going, to be honest with you. Um, I, since I've retired, 
I um, got training in Orton Gillingham to teach dyslexic children. So my first year of retirement, I did that. Second year of retirement, well, and I tutored. <laughs> I just can't give it up. <laughs> I tutored uh, for, uh, Title I math in, uh, at the Nancy Loud School because uh, I just couldn't get away from schools. Uh, and then I did it again my second year of retirement, uh, tutoring again in math, and then did the second level of training in Norton Gillingham. So I, it, it just gave me a different perspective, uh, another, another layer of you know, education. Um, and then this past year, I was going to go back and tutor again, but I had four grandchildren that lived in Dover, and they were remote until May. So they needed their grandmother to do remote education with them. So I really haven't left education much, but I had I three years retired. That's kind of what I bring to the district is my life, <laughs> my beliefs, and, and that sort of thing. And to answer your question, uh, it, I'm assuming. <laughs> I heard that Travis might um, have been giving up his position, but then it didn't. I didn't hear that he had, so no, I didn't think to apply because I didn't think that he was giving it up. So, yeah. so I do have a, a question. So. Uh, uh, you obviously have experience within the district, both as a teacher and an administrator level. So when you said you're, this is a, a new responsibility. So why three years retirement, teaching all that, there's a one year opening. What's driving you to say? Just my concern for the district, my love of learning. I, I kind of took a step back but when I did retire, you know, I was told, hey, you know, <laughs> can I always use good people with that historical background about the district and kind of knows what's going on, um, you know, so think about doing it. And when this came up, I thought about doing it. So. Would you, I have one more question, yeah, of course. if you don't mind. So when you said you're assistant principal and principal, you were involved in the budgeting process. Um, uh, the discipline process before the school board at the time, all of that, you have experience with that? Oh, budget process, yes. Yeah, uh, uh, the discipline, you're working on the handbook the, and that sort of thing. Um, and uh, when I was a teacher, I served on negotiations and I served on math committees. I, I kind of did a lot. <laughs> okay, thank you. I, I like, again, like to be busy. Um, just can't take the teacher out of me, I guess. So. Questions? No. no, I think we're all set. Um, does anybody want to add to anything that they have said or, or you guys all good? All right. The only question that I have kind of as a broad spectrum is um, this is only for a one year appointment. It's normally for three years, right? Right. Okay. So after this one year appointment, if you were serving, would you be interested in continuing beyond that one year is my general question. If you are, just raise your hand. All right, everybody interested? Just, just question popped into my head. All right, um, let's discuss. <laughs> um, I will reserve my point of view. Is there a person that speaks to you personally that you would that you would feel most comfortable with? I'm 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 going to reiterate in the beginning. I'm excited the fact that there are three people sitting here. That's very important. that is phenomenal, yeah. and uh, I appreciate everybody coming out and putting themselves out there um, because yeah, it's not easy, no. and uh, and we need more of that. Um, I'm just going to say it is it is a one year. Mm -hmm. So there's only one year left of a three year term. I can tell you that when I started, there is that little bit of a getting accustomed to how the processes work and everything and uh, what needs to be done. So uh, I look at Miss Lovejoy as already having that experience. So she won't have that need that time period um, for just a one year. Um, so I, I think I, I'm kind of leaning that way at the moment. I'll see you guys can talk me out of it <laughs> but that's that's where i'm going but just so you know that's what i'm basing it on as well because i think i think all three candidates would do a great job i agree i'm just my thing was you're looking at a short window yeah. of a term so a third of the term so someone who comes on board already has to have the she already has the background both from an administrative and a teacher perspective which is going to be crucial with uh, what i believe is coming up for the school board in the coming year 
Yeah, I mean, really to reiterate what, what Linda was saying was, I mean, again, we have three people interested in wanting to <laughs> further the growth of, of our community. And as a father of two children in Set 60, I'm appreciative of that, that that growth is there. Um, the, the same thing that, that Linda was talking about, I think being at the end of the term and knowing what the budgeting kind of looks like from coming out of a pandemic and, and what's been squeezed and what's what the, the challenges are going forward. I, I think seeing a little bit of experience from from both, someone's got to be able to communicate that yeah, uh, on that end of it as well, as far as, as the board is what's what's leaning to me in, in regards to the Elba. Um, but again, I I don't think we could go wrong with any, any one of yeah, any of I, I don't think so there. either. Um, and, and that's that's definitely you know, something I see there. Um, but again, I, I think having having that experience, being in that negotiations, being seeing what's really coming to the budget and, and what's working with that in the town, I think that's where I'm just leaning a little bit right now. And we would also encourage, no matter who we end up voting, that. Um, there will be another opening. There'll be there will be an opening. election. There'll be an election. Year. Yeah, for and the that same spot so, for a three-year term. Yes, for for the full term. So um, that being said, I agree with everything that's been stated, and I am very happy that there are three people that are interested in the position. When I ran for my position, I had my me, myself, and I. So, and it was close, it was close <laughs> at the very end. So. Um, I think we're pretty well on one mind of this and I will entertain a motion. I will make a motion to nominate Elva Lovejoy to fill the one year term on the school board to represent Berwick. Second that motion. Any further discussion? All in favor? Welcome to the school board. And <laughs> actually, I, you're absolutely right. We're very lucky to have someone with that level of experience coming to the school board. Um, I can only see it as a positive, but again, in a year, this position will be open again, and it's open to anybody who wants to run. I, how many signatures do you need to run for that? 25. 25, yeah. At least 25, no more than 100. Yeah, you can get that around your neighborhood. <laughs> but I would- I've done it before. Yeah, I would encourage you too, if you're really you know, seriously interested in it, um, I would pop in on some of those school board meetings and listen to some of the stuff that comes up to prepare yourself before you jump in. So you really know, um, you know, how involved it is and how detailed it is. Remind me, is there public comment at a school board meeting too? Are they open yes. session to come in too? So I, I think that's, you know, something to be encouraged too, is yeah. that being yeah. there and having a dialogue yes. with the board directly too. There is a public comments at both the beginning and the end if I am correct, of every school board meeting. Terrific. Welcome aboard. <laughs> Get it? Welcome aboard. Never mind. <laughs> All right. Uh, moving along. Unfinished business. We have none. Town manager report. We have some. We do have some. Um, but we closed on the Blue Sort building. Uh, I mailed off the rep, all the documentation to uh, Mark Cahaya's um, attorney in Portland. Uh, and they have already sent a check to our attorney in escrow for $35,725. So that completes our prime tanning project, which has oh. been very good. <laughs> it completes that yes. part of it, yes. <laughs> yes. This is well. I say yay. <laughs> I say yay, Finance too. director goes, yay. <laughs> so that's off our plate. And uh, now we'll see what Mark does with it. I know he's had several people inquiring uh, to buy it from him. Um, so we'll see what happens. Um, also, um, Officer Vashon, uh, he was our community uh, police officer, mm -hmm. um, has retired, and he has chosen to do a different career. So we have one empty position there, and then we have another officer, which you heard last week, um, who's uh, uh, moving to what, uh, Wyoming. So we're going to have two full positions available. Um, we have uh, Thank you. signed the paperwork for the DEA agent after a lot of yeah. conversation with our accountant. Um, so that's in the works. And let's see. We had a meeting today with Wright Pierce, the engineering group that's looking for alternative water sources. They've done quite a bit of work up to this point. Uh, and we reviewed that. They, they have about six different areas that they look pretty heavily at. 
and and looking at the geology a lot of it not my forte geology but um seems to make sense so uh, they have picked three that they're going to go in and and uh, start doing some test wells so that will take two or three weeks and we'll see what we get for results it's quantity and quality we're pushing to get 400 gallons a minute they seem confident that one of these wells will produce that um if we can't get one well to do it they'll and we get more out of another wells, we'll pump from two wells instead, or more if we have to. But uh, so they'll be contacting the landowners, uh, they, they get to work with them. And then once they decide to go back out with the landowner, uh, myself and Jody will probably go out with them and uh, just see how it goes. They actually go in with an ATV, so they don't go in with a big gear mm -hmm. and, uh, and put in uh, the test pipes, you know, four inch in diameter. So. We'll see what it yields. I'm looking forward to it. Um, I attended, uh, James and I attended uh, Bibber's uh, grand opening today in ribbon yep. cutting. Uh, I watched that building go up and uh, hadn't seen it quite completed yet. It's beautiful. It is absolutely beautiful. The setting is nice. Um, they had quite a few people attend um, and it was a nice affair and I welcomed them uh, to their new home and uh, they've been here for quite some time so they we have they're a good group to work with and patty gets to deal with them more than i ever do but, uh, also um i spoke to a commercial uh realtor today we're meeting tomorrow with the fire station boys they're one of the bigger more aggressive uh commercial appraisers i had i called several others nobody seemed to get back to me <laughs> bolus did which I'm kind of glad. It's a good did. sign. Yeah, it is a good sign. So that will hopefully be on the market soon. And, good. And like, like we had said last week, we have a, a professional appraisal that was done, and I'll give her a copy of that, which is very recent. So she'll have some good information. So otherwise, that's all I have. Any questions for the town manager? And we're getting ready for year end. Mm. Oh. Mm. <laughs> yeah. That's fun. What is that? Eight days away? Yeah. Well, yep. yep. <laughs> and the office will be closed early that day. So yes. everybody can pitch in. So Select main communications. There are none. Approval of the accounts payable warrants. And there are two. Uh, payroll warrant number 81 from December 20, uh, sorry, from June 24th, 2021. I don't know where December came from. <laughs> the amount of $70,653.16. And AP warrant 82, no out of $96,734.03. And In tradition, I will move that we pay our bills. I'll second it. Uh, any discussion? All in favor? And the bills get paid for another week. All right, on to new business. Most exciting thing we have today, we have polls and liquor license and a memo. Okay, so first we have a temporary liquor license for an event on, uh, boy, where, what is the location? July 15th, wasn't it? Yep, July 14th. Yeah, July 14th, 14th yeah. Blackberry Road. It's, uh, Farm, they're doing a wedding. No, um, the main farmland trust. Oh. Just an event. Just a farming. Just an event celebration of the protection of land. Sounds terrific. Everything is is correct according to Patty. They just need our approval so they can get it to the state. Any questions? Um, do they anticipate how many people are going to be there, and is it a requirement of the town? I'm just inquiring is, is to pay some number of people or do they have to have a law enforcement officer there? No, I went over that with them. It's not going to be, there's no need for road closure or anything like that. Uh, it's all self-contained on the land, private land. Um, she did, we did talk about participants and I can't remember, but it, it's not a huge amount. Okay. Yep. Looking at the map too, it looks like it's pretty far back on the, yeah. on the property. So it shouldn't. 
Yeah, I think it's where they normally hold the craft fair back there. Any other questions? No. I will entertain a motion. I will make a motion that we approve the liquor permit for July 14th for the main farmland trust. Second. Any comments? All in favor? All right, so poll permit number one is for Cranberry Meadow Road. Oh, sorry, 65 people. Oh, 65 people? Thank you, guys. Sorry, no. All right. Where is the location? Starting point 28. No. This one is for Cranberry Meadow Road. Yep. Does it say where it is on the road? Third page. Okay. Yeah. Page three. Yeah. All right. This is by CMP. There's not really much to discuss. Is there any questions about? Is this for a new house? Is that where this is going in? I don't I'm just curious if it's for your house going in. Uh, Construct and maintain poles together with attached facilities along or across certain streets and highways. Um, It looks like they're just putting a pole in between two other poles. So it looks like, yeah. Yeah. Okay. No mention of a new new structure. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Cool. I make a motion that we approve the town pole permit for Cranberry Meadow Road. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? The next poll is on Long Swamp Road, starting point 75. Uh, about the same information as the last one. Yeah. Yeah, overhead. I will entertain a motion. Second. Favor? And number three, a poll for Blackberry Hill Road. Starting point 112. All the same information. information. All right. Any I'm questions? Nope, I make a motion that we approve the permit, poll permit for Blackberry Hill Road. Second. Uh, all in favor? And there we go. All right, this is a memo on the uh, stormwater discharges for the municipal separate stormwater sewer system. I, I can speak a little bit to that. Christy, Good just up. so you know, Christy Robasca is a, a hired engineer through Southern Maine Planning and Development. She's an independent. She covers Elliott, South Berwick, North Berwick, all, all of the towns. Um, and we contract, they contract with her every year. Uh, she uh, has to report to the DEP uh, and to the Board of Selectmen an annual report, which uh, she is coming. July 13th. July 13th to present to you where we are. So oh, okay. she, she does an amazing job. She's quite good. So, so she's going to be presenting on the MS4 project. Yes. Yep. If you guys aren't aware, it's a stormwater project. It's going to cost a whole bunch of money that we don't want to spend right now. <laughs> yeah, we, we have one very large project up on Moulton Street, and it goes up the hill towards Second. And uh, we've had it all engineered. Uh, estimate is $1.3 million. Uh, we have to do this as a law. Of course, they'd pay for it instead of us, but um, we put it off. Christy's been real good, and I keep trying to push it back a little bit. 
Uh, but we've done two projects over uh, on Moulton Street, and uh, this is the big one. So the engineered so, project looks great. Yeah, it looks amazing. It is amazing, but it's a very, it's for the distance they're doing. It's still, to me, way over the top on price. But yeah. that's the way it is today. And it's only going to get more expensive the longer we wait. That's the other problem. Yeah. I was going to say that project is pretty much dictated by the DEP to us, right? Yeah. 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 But they're not paying for it. We are. All right. So there's no quick, uh, quick claim deeds or installments, no abatements. Second public comment. Nope. <laughs> nope. Sorry. You're not required to. You can sit there and enjoy. Um, there's no executive session. Is there any other business that anybody wants to bring up before the board? No, no uh, other notices in the past week about our job posting or anything? Nothing? Nope. We're looking for staff. Yeah. We're looking so. for someone in water. We're looking for someone in public works. We're looking for somebody in uh, Addie's office, our part time person who was going to start July 1 and is full time, has been offered a position, different position full time. And we can't compete with uh, what they're paying. Yeah, what they're paying. It's, so are you going to have a full time position open? She was supposed to ease into full time once the new budget goes in. But. So we'll advertise. I'm sure we'll find somebody. Sadly, I'm unavailable. It's <laughs> okay. Can um, see the disappointment on Patty's face. <laughs> I'm a hoot, and I work very hard. <laughs> I um, have no doubt. All right. If there is nothing else, then I will entertain the motion to adjourn. Make a motion to adjourn. I'll second the motion. All those in favor? And we're done. Okay.